Hey friends, welcome back to the homestead. Just wanted to remind you about our November 30th live stream celebration coming up November 30th at 7 p.m. Central Time. It's coming up quick. We're really excited about it, uh, but we're going to be celebrating my birthday as well as my 100th video upload. Uh, it's been an amazing journey so far. We really love to, to spend it with you. Also going to be giving away a GoPro Hero 7 Black at the end of the live stream. Uh, so make sure you stick around to the end of this video and answer the question down in the comments below so that you can be registered for another chance to win that GoPro and we'll be giving it away live November 30th, 7 p.m. Uh, mark your calendars. But this video, as you can probably tell from the title, is about hunting and field dressing a deer. Now I understand that this could be a sensitive subject for some of you and uh, I don't in any way want to offend you so if this isn't your thing just go ahead and skip this video I should be posting something else very soon about some fun stuff that we got going on here at the homestead uh, so you won't miss out on much um, and uh, if, if you don't mind seeing things like this then go ahead and watch this video keep an open mind uh, to that this is this is a way of life that's really important to us uh, it's how we put some food on the table how we have a bit more of a sustainable lifestyle and it's a it's a responsibility that we see as uh, ours to manage the wildlife and manage the population here on the homestead. I don't know if you're aware that Tennessee suffers from uh, or Tennessee's wildlife suffers from a disease called CWD, uh, chronic wasting disease, and what it does it affects the neurological systems of the deer, elk, and moose populations, and it's a it's a pretty significant uh, impact to the entire population. So uh, Tennessee has, has made great strides to curb the spread of that disease, and it's a responsibility for for hunters to use safe and uh, responsible hunting practices so that we can help to manage that population. So we really do see it as our responsibility to do that and we're just doing our part. Uh, but this video uh, is about some techniques that I learned from my grandfather in how to field dress a deer. So without further ado, enjoy the video. Opening weekend of gun season. And, uh, what time is it? Almost eight o'clock in the morning. I just took down a buck. Right up here, in Bush Hog Hollow, coming down right beside the pond. Yep, I got him. Dropped him right where he stood. It's a good size. That makes me happy. The first thing that you'll want to do before field dressing your deer is to remove your outer layer and anything else that might be difficult to wash. Be sure to place them far enough away to not get messy and also make sure that they're uphill from your work area. Don't ask me how I know that. The next thing that you'll need is a very sharp knife. Trying to do this with a dull knife will just leave you frustrated and possibly very badly hurt. I have a video on using a Lansky knife sharpening kit to get a super scary sharp knife. I'll post that video in the comments below. Take off any jewelry or watches that you're fond of because you're going to be elbow deep inside a deer by the end of this. If you have some nitrile or rubber gloves, they can come in handy for cleanup and help you know when you've cut yourself, as you'll see here in a moment.
you will want to position your deer in a way that will make things easier. If you're able to, position it long ways across a slight incline, which will help the bowels to fall out more easily. Make sure you're not on too steep of an incline because you don't want the deer sliding down the hill in a pile of its own bloody innards. Don't ask me how I know that. Once you get the deer positioned, stand between the two back legs, which should support the rest of the deer so that the chest and abdomen are pointed straight up. Feel for the top of the abdomen and the point where the, all the ribs come together. That's the sternum. This is where you're going to make your first incision. I've found it easier to cut through the hide right there on the edge of the bone instead of trying to puncture through the skin into soft tissue where you could risk puncturing the stomach. Once you've cut through the skin on the sternum, you should be able to slide a finger up underneath the skin and separate it from the other tissue as you cut down the middle of the abdomen. You will be cutting through the outer layer of the hide, a thin layer of muscle, and a thin translucent membrane that holds all the organs into the abdomen cavity. It is really important when cutting through these layers that you do not puncture the stomach lining. The stomach is very large, soft pink sack looking thing at the top where the abdomen reaches the ribcage. If you have a basic understanding of anatomy, this should be pretty easy to identify. Puncturing the stomach releases all the gases contained in it and a foul stench that makes the rest of this process rather unpleasant. If you have a clean kill shot, there should not be much blood to deal with while working in the abdomen cavity. You will want to continue to cut your way straight down the abdomen past the scrotum to where the back legs come together just before the anus. We don't have to worry about cutting through the pelvis or cleaning out the rectum and bladder at this time. We will deal with that when we quarter it. I was taught how to field dress a deer like this by my grandfather. The purpose was to remove all the undesired internal organs while keeping a smaller opening to prevent debris and pests from getting inside. It's especially helpful when you have to drag your harvest long distance. Not only reduces the weight, but it also keeps your meat from being spoiled by outside contaminants. Some people may want to salvage some of the internal organs, which is perfectly fine. Simply place them back into the cavity after you've been able to clean out all the other unwanted innards. To remove the organs, just reach into the abdomen around the edges and carefully scoop them out. There are a couple of places that are attached up at the top towards the stomach and around the liver and spleen. Just reach in, grab a hold of anything that you feel holding on, and carefully cut through it. Everything should slide out into one big group.
Then cut the large intestines from the anus. Sometimes there is some excrement built up in the large intestines, and you'll want to avoid getting that into the cavity. The best way that I've found to deal with this is to reach up as far as you can towards the anus, pinch the large intestines between your thumb and index finger, and slide your fingers back the direction of the stomach, and that forces all the excrement away from the opening. You can then cut through the intestines closer to the anus, and the entire abdomen cavity should be empty at this point. After removing everything from the abdomen, you'll want to cut through the diaphragm muscle, separating the abdomen from the chest cavity. This is usually where things start to get messy. Just cut through the muscle all the way around the inside of the rib cage and give yourself access to the heart and lungs. You will then be able to reach into the chest cavity and find the one last place that needs to be cut which is the esophagus, trachea, and some major blood vessels. They are all bundled together at the top of the lungs, just above the heart. Reach in there with your hand and carefully cut them out. Everything should come out in one bundle. Some people may like to keep the heart And if so, just cut it off the other organs and place it back in the cavity with anything else that you're planning on keeping. Personally, I do not have use for them at this moment, and the heart was damaged, so it was no use to me. Depending on your shot and the wound inflicted, there may be some sharp shards of bone exposed, so be careful when feeling around with your hands, and try not to cut yourself like I just did. Next, you'll want to flip your deer over and dump out the remaining blood and anything else that's left inside. Just let it sit there and drain as you clean up a little bit. If you're not near a clean source of water, you'll probably want to bring a bottle of water with you. A little water goes a long ways. Just use a handkerchief to wipe the blood away. It's not going to be perfect, but you'll at least not leave bloody handprints all over everything that you touch. Make sure you clean off your knife too. It's a lot harder to clean off dried blood than it is when it's fresh. And that's it, a quick and dirty job, but a necessary one if you're going to be doing any kind of big game hunting. That was easy. It's always helpful when you have somebody else to help. Guys, thank you so much for watching. That was a that was a fun morning to be able to to get that guy. Uh, it's always nice when you're able to be successful uh, in your hunt. But uh, um, yeah, it was a uh, it was an honor to be able to to harvest him and put some meat in the freezer. It was it was pretty cool because I hung him up under the uh, the lean to and was getting ready to uh, to finish processing him when a couple of other hunters came by and they uh, they lived further away and they were actually 
trying to find a processor that they could take their uh, their deer to that they had had harvested earlier that morning, and none of the none of the processors in the area were uh, were open or had availability. So they ended up just asking if I wanted to take it, and I figured, hey, if I'm processing one, might as well process another. So so we've got two deer in the freezer now, and uh, and it's. Uh, it's it's looking like a, a good harvest so far. So uh, I think a couple more, and that'll that should should last us, and we'll see what uh, what else Dad needs and, and my sister, so that we can uh, we can fill up everyone's freezers. So um, question for you: What is a uh, what is a skill or uh, a useful thing that you've been taught by? by an elder or a, a grandparent or, or something of that nature. I'd love to hear, uh, hear what kind of skills you guys have learned uh, from people who are, are, have come before you. So let me know in the comments below. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this video informative or entertaining in any way, uh, please hit the thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, uh, please uh, consider subscribing uh, and see more of what we have going on here on the homestead. And I uh, hope to see you guys on November 30th at 7 p.m. Central Time uh, for our live stream celebration. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.